Losing weight is hard enough, but what you probably don't know is that keeping the weight off after is actually the hardest part. Research has shown less than 20% of people who lose 10% of their weight keep it off in the first year, and after a few years, almost nobody keeps it off. So as someone who got as high as 210 pounds and is now maintained in the 170s for the last eight years, I wanna show you what I've done and what you need to do to finally keep the weight off. So there's a lot of reasons why it's hard to keep the weight off after losing it, and it's both because of psychological and physiological reasons. Your body has what's called a body fat set point. This is the amount of body fat that your body's used to and comfortable with. When you get too far below that, your body doesn't like this, it thinks that there's a shortage of food supply, and it's gonna do everything it can to get you to gain that weight back. It's gonna make you more hungry, more tired, more cranky, you're gonna have less energy, your willpower is gonna drop, it's just gonna be a struggle. So when you notice this, understand, it's normal, but what you can't do is throw all caution to the wind and say, screw it, or you're gonna gain that weight back fast. So understand step number one is you can never just be done. You can't look at some sort of fat loss plan as I'm just gonna do this until the weight's gone. Something you have to do for the rest of your life. Now this doesn't mean you have to stay on low calories. I'm gonna get to that in a minute. It doesn't mean you have to blast yourself all the time. It doesn't mean you can't back off, but it can't be an all or nothing approach. Part of what makes this so challenging is the hormonal and metabolic suppressions that come from dieting. So your maintenance calories calories, they're going to be lower than they should be. So you need to get your metabolism to speed back up. And you do this through a process called reverse dieting. This is where you gradually increase your calories over time. And what this allows your body to do is get your metabolism to speed back up as it gets used to higher calories again. But this way you can really help minimize fat gain versus just shooting your calories straight back up. Or what would be much worse, what you've maybe done in the past is just said, screw it and started binging like crazy, especially if you've had overly restrictive dieting patterns, you're going to gain weight rapidly. So to begin with, you can bump up your calories a little bit faster and it kind of depends on how fast you've been losing at the end you can certainly go straight back to maintenance but remember your maintenance is now lower than it should be so say for instance if you use the 3500 calories for a pound of fat rule if you're losing a pound of fat by the end that's about 500 calories a day you could probably pretty safely jump right back up another 500 calories and then you can take maybe 50 to 100 calorie increases from there until you get it back up to where it should be all that being said though i want you to be very aware of something that not a lot of people understand you're probably going to be even more hungry during the reverse diet than you were in your cutting phase. It's just one of those things where it can really take you off guard if you're not aware that this is gonna happen. And I think it's really, honestly, for lack of a better term, it's just your body is going, thank you for the extra calories. I've been wanting this for a long time. Give me more. I need more calories. It just makes you hungry trying to get more and more out of you. So it's important to stay diligent. This is hard to do, not only physiologically for all the reasons I already gave you, but also psychologically because as humans, we love to make progress. And it's easier to deal with hunger and stay in your your plan when you're going to see your body changing but it's so imperative that you stick with things diligently here this is how you keep from gaining too much weight during the process and get to a better spot but if you keep overeating because you're hungry you're going to gain weight quickly and then you're probably going to be apprehensive towards increasing your calories more because you're already gaining weight and you don't want that so what you really want to do here is view your reverse diet as basically like an extension of your cutting phase and stay on top of things and don't give your body what it wants and then when you eventually do feel better and you're not super food focused and you're much less hungry and feeling better, now you can take more of an intuitive approach and not have to be so diligent, but you gotta be patient here. The other thing you wanna do is keep up with your active lifestyle. Now, you definitely wanna keep up with your strength training. You can reduce your cardio sum and taper that down, much like you slowly increase your calories. You can gradually decrease your cardio too and get it down to a more reasonable level that you wanna maintain on, but you do wanna remain active. And this is a great thing you can do to help mentally as well, is shifting your focus away from body composition goals. And now you need something else to focus on, like performance-based goals, being able to enjoy more food, and just really focusing on all the benefits that come with getting calories up because there's a lot and when it comes to your diet hopefully when you were cutting you weren't overly restrictive and just cut out all your favorite foods this is a big reason if you struggle to keep your weight off it's probably because you don't allow yourself to enjoy anything you do like so that when you are done now you feel like you have to have all these fun foods that were banned and off limits before and there's no off button but even if you did you can start including them now but it needs to be in a moderation and you want to account for it in your intake so you certainly still want to eat healthy and have plenty of nutrient-dense foods keep your fiber up, eat plenty of lean protein, but also allow yourself to enjoy some treats, be okay with going out to eat, going out for celebrations, because food is a big part of our lives. Now, here's a big struggle. A lot of people have, you've probably had this struggle yourself before. It's viewing this stuff as optional, and when other areas of your life get really busy, then you say, well, I can't do this right now, it's too much, I'll wait until I give 
100%. And that's just not how it works. Sometimes you need to be okay with less and feel accomplished versus feeling like you have to do everything. And if you don't, then you feel worse. What I mean by that is, let's say for instance, right now you're working out five times per week. Now things get busy, you're struggling and you're only getting like two or three workouts in. You feel bad about it. You feel like you're wasting your time. What's the point if I'm only doing this? I should be getting five and I'm only getting two. But what if instead of saying you need to do five when you're busy, you said, I'm gonna get three workouts in now, or maybe even just two workouts. Now you feel good about it, you feel accomplished because you're doing what you set out to do. It's the same amount of workouts, but in one scenario, you feel bad about it, and the other scenario, you feel good about it. So be okay with backing off and not feeling like you have to give 100% or there's no point at all. And then there's what I would consider to be the biggest misconception when it comes to weight maintenance. Weight maintenance doesn't mean you get to a certain weight and you just weigh that weight for the rest of your life. And keep in mind too, like weight can fluctuate a lot just from water weight alone, but you can even have improvements in body composition at a higher body weight because you have more muscles. So you don't want to get caught up too much in the scale. But even when it comes to body composition, it's not about being the exact same for the rest of your life. I mean, at least for very few people, I mean, 99.9% .9 of people aren't going to be able to do that. Weight maintenance is more of a range of weight. Maybe it's around about a 10 pound range. That's kind of what I do. I have about a 10 pound buffer and I basically don't diet usually for a couple years as I slowly gain some weight back. Once I get to that upper end of the range, it's been a really long time. I'm in a great spot metabolically. I can go into a short cutting phase, usually maybe around 12 to 16 weeks. I can knock it out, get that weight off, and then get back out and then start enjoying the higher calories again. But what you can't do is start freaking out every time you gain a few pounds and diet. Gain a few pounds, diet. Gain a few pounds, diet. That is going to run your metabolism into the ground. Your body is going to be pissed at you. It's not going to go well. And you're going to be yo-yoing all over the place, getting nowhere, usually only getting fatter. So under understand the difference between a long time without dieting and constantly coming in and out. Now, with all that being said, I do have a strategy that I've pretty much never heard anybody else ever talk about that is probably the best strategy there is to lose weight and keep it off by allowing your body to think that your body fat set point has not changed much. And to find out what that strategy is, make sure you check out this top video next and I'll walk you through it and I'll see you in that other video.